All right, guys, Chase and Trevor here with Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, we wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about investments. We do live in San Diego, which is one of the hottest cities in the nation, as you guys know. Um, but after you make your initial uh, home purchase, every buyer uh, always thinks, what's next? What can I do for my next investment? And uh, I wanted to chat with Trevor about it because uh, Trevor uh, is an investor. He owns investment properties. He is managed up to 21 doors. Um, so he does have an idea of how that works. So Trevor, what's like the most important thing to know about being a landlord? Was it, is it the insurance? Is it protecting yourself? Is it, uh, how do you treat your uh, tenants? I really don't know a lot about it because I only have one rental unit and it's a close friend of mine that lives there. So, you know, I'm not working with strangers. I'm just kind of curious what it's like. like is it difficult? Is it easy? Is it a job? Um, there's fluctuations in it, just like any other type of investment. Um, I kind of got thrown into it, you know, feet first in the deep end um, with my scenario. But, you know, screening tenants, I think, would probably be the biggest thing out of every aspect of what you can do with an investment property because one bad tenant can ruin a whole year for you. Um, there's so many different levels to it, and screening the tenant would be the first one or finding the right property would be the first one, screening the tenant would be the second, keeping the tenant happy would be the third, and adjusting to all the different California's protocols that they have now would probably be the fourth. See, I wouldn't even think that. I would just think, just throw somebody in there that's gonna pay rent. So that's important, screening the tenants. I now could understand that. Um, can you do certain things to a rental to get more rent or are you kind of stuck to what the area calls for? Well, so now San Diego County within the last year or two, they have installed rent cap, which you probably heard a lot of in LA County and LA city in itself or any part of Northern California, but Seven. San Diego County just um, installed that within itself in the last two years. Um, so it gives a rental increase within 5% in one year span plus the rate of inflation so i think it's 2.7 so it's a total of 7.7 percent that you can raise your rent on your tenants within one year or 12 months so how does that so when you come up with how much you rent that property for do you go on like airbnb sites or do you how do you evaluate what your property is worth how much do you rent it for because i've i've seen people like clients of my own say, oh, I rent my uh, thousand square foot granny flat out for 1500 a month. And and then I talk to somebody else and like, oh, I rent my thousand square foot granny flat out for 2500 uh, a month. Is that because of the area or is that because of the lack of knowledge that the landlord has? I think it's both. Um, you know, being in real estate now and comping the home of a sale price is completely different of a rental price. Um, because homes can go offline on the rental market a lot sooner than they can on the buy side. Um, so you have to be in the network within investors in the area to get that comparable rent price. Um, and that's probably the trickiest thing. You know, you could think it might be the slum of El Cajon or a nice part of El Cajon. Well, the two can coincide and be very close to one another. Um, it doesn't have to do with, you know, a comparable Zillow price because this one sat on the market for three months at 2,700 bucks for a two bedroom. But if it gets rented out for 2,500 bucks, you know, what's the nut going to be? Yeah. So that all makes sense to me now, but I have one question. It's kind of weird to me. I, I didn't know this, but um, I've recently had to replace a refrigerator and a washer and dryer. Um, do most, how, do like... What do you put in your rental property? Do they come with all the appliances? What what stays? It's you know just like a purchase agreement in a in a contractual uh, on the buy side. Um, whatever's in the lease agreement, that's typically your purchase agreement for a property. Um, so you can designate whether you're going to supply washer and dryer or refrigerator. Typically, washer and dryer may not be involved, just like it may not be on a purchase agreement on a, of a um, residential property. Um, you know, kitchen appliances are pretty typical in there. Refrigerator, stove, you know, fixtures, so so on and so forth, are typically involved in that agreement. Um, so, going to the washer and dryer, stuff like that, that may not be involved, but that's another thing in and of itself. Units that have washers and dryers, that's a cash cow for rental investors, um, because you know they supply to like a mini laundry mat. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, they do the job. It's an extra form of income, I get it. 
Um, I hope this helped you guys because this is all new information for me too. So I always like to learn. Um, I know there's a ton more to it, but we didn't want to drag this out. So if you guys have any questions about buying your next invest investment property and you're ready to leap in, you can message us. I can line you up with Trevor or we can work together as a team. We can get it done. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was somewhat helpful and don't be scared guys. Uh, we know more about real estate than you think.